inside the transmission, they have a layout. Something along the lines, there we go, like that. And you'll notice every single gear is touching the other gear, which if I was to drive a car like that and I had one set of gears saying, let's do three to one, this one says one to one, you wouldn't go anywhere, they'd bind up. And that's because inside the transmissions, the gears aren't locked to the shaft. So some of these, if I roll this away, I can take the gear itself, and even though this right here is the final drive connected to the wheels, you can see what can I do with that gear. It spins around, right? Which means if I'm driving down the road, in this case that's first gear, if I'm driving down the road in first gear, fifth gear all the way down here, that gear is still meshed and they're still spinning. It's just not trying to put power out to the wheel. It's basically rolling in neutral. And so when we go to select a gear, all we're doing is we're locking one of these neutral gears to the shaft. In this one's case, power flow is pretty straightforward. This piece right here connects to your clutch, which connects to your engine. So when you take your foot off the clutch, you connect the back of the engine, the flywheel and, and the pressure plate, to the clutch disc that grabs this guy and starts to spin it. In fact, if you put a transmission in neutral and take your foot off the clutch, all of this in the transmission starts spinning. It's just nothing's connected to the back wheel. It's all put into neutral. Now, if I want to drive down the road, go. all I have to do is first push in the clutch so I'm not putting power into the input shaft, and then I have to lock one of these gears to the back wheels. And that's the decision the driver makes. If I decide I'm at a stoplight and I want to start in fourth gear, I can make that decision. How well does it work? Anyone tried this? I did it in third. It was such a slow start. I got a car to move once in fifth gear, although you can smell the clutch. I just wanted to prove I could do it. It wasn't my car, so it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, you pick the gear that you want. Now in this case, typically, you're going to pick first. And what you're going to hear and, and what you're going to feel is the shift fork is sitting right on here. And when you move the shifter over to the side, and most cars are going to be towards you, um, when you pull it over, it's going to select the shift rail responsible for this part of the transmission. If I was to let the transmission go over to the middle, it actually selects the fork responsible for this section. And if I go to the fifth reverse, so I go over to the right in this case, it selects this fork. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it over and it selects this rail right here. And when I push this thing forward or backwards, it's going to move this sleeve right here forward and backwards. And what that does is it locks the gear to the shaft. So when the engine is turning this shaft, which this gear is solid, it's a part of the transmission turns, this turns no matter what. If I then connect this gear to this shaft, and that goes out to my rear wheels, that's how I get into first gear. Now when you move the shifter forward, all we're doing you know, is I take this piece right here and I'm moving it forward. And the first thing it does is it hits my synchronizer in here. Sometimes, well, the whole thing we often refer to as a synchronizer, but it hits the part we refer to as a blocker ring. Now, if I got something called a blocker ring, what do you think it's doing? Blocking the shift, right? It's done that way because, and the reason it has the term synchronizer is I have a shaft spinning pretty quickly here, which is spinning this gear. Well, I need to get that gear down to the correct RPM to match the back tires. And so if I am going down the freeway at 40 miles an hour and I try to put it in the first gear, the gears aren't going the right speed. The blocker gear is actually going to let me do that. It's a terrible idea. Don't do it. But it's going to push on this little blocker ring, and that blocker ring has got little um, ridges cut inside of it. Sometimes actually a Kevlar clutch inside of it. And it works kind of like a brake pad. And it's going to try and get this shaft and this gear to go the same speed. Or in other words, stop them from going at different speed. Kind of like your wheels versus the road. Different speed when you're going down the road. And it's going to bring them together. And as soon as those two are spinning the same speed, the blocker ring starts to relax. So we don't have that differential speed. And we can go past the blocker ring right there and hit the gear. And when it comes all the way over the gear, now this guy's locked to the shaft. That's all a shift really is. Um, if I have a blocker ring that's worn out, sometimes it takes a long time to go into gear. Um, if the teeth are worn out, sometimes it pops out of gear. The worst thing is though, if you ever hear that grinding sound, you hear them grinding gears, you're not grinding the gears, I'm not moving them in and out. What you're doing is there's this delicate row of teeth right here. These teeth are connected to that gear, so when I shift this back, I'm moving that shift sleeve over those teeth. That's what you're ripping apart. 
And if you look at these up close, you'll see the, the profile of these teeth kind of looks like Snoopy's doghouse, right? It has a little taper to it and then comes up to a point. You have to have that sharp point so that when this sleeve hits that point, it hits one side of that ramp or other and walks down it and locks this thing into gear. But if you have somebody that does a terrible job of shifting, they're not pushing the clutch in all the way, whatever's going on, you hear that grinding noise, they're shaving that point off. If that point becomes rounded and I try to put another point on it and get it to walk down the slope, what happens? If I hit a rounded roof, right, I'm not gonna go down a nice slope. And suddenly, you got shifts that don't want to go in. You've got to try and synchronize with your foot on the gas and keep pushing. That's what that grinding noise is. So if you hear that, don't let them keep driving your car. They're destroying, not a synchronizer, cheap and easy to replace, the expensive part. That's the speed here. Once those are gone, they're gone. Okay, in the simple version of it, the way the shifting mechanism is set up, and you'll see this with all these, the only way I can go from first to second gear is to pull the shifter back. Well, all that does is pull the sleeve back, there you go, and it's now unlocked first gear, and when I keep pulling down the shifter, there we go, just grab second gear. When I go third, fourth, fifth gear, whatever it is, first thing that happens is this goes to neutral, I move my shifter over, it comes over here, and it's not going to pull that one into place. Shifting is really just that simple, but when you get customers in and they complain about, I have hard shifts and other things, keep in mind, it's usually teeth or synchronizers on the inside, um, or they may have an issue with the clutch, but this is kind of where we're looking. Otherwise, how many parts are really in here? Not much. There isn't much, huh? In fact, there's not much to go wrong. Um, you're not gonna overhaul a lot of manual transmissions, partly because there's not a lot left in the industry. Um, and they're pretty much a robust device. They're gonna last a lifetime in the car. But if they do wear out and they do fail, typically what you're gonna do is, you're gonna be replacing these bearings, you see a couple right here, and you're gonna be replacing these blocker rings. Now on Monday, we'll have blocker rings in our hands. We're gonna pull these things apart and you'll see what they look like. But they are made of a softer material. That's on purpose, it's like your brakes. Brake pads are usually made of a softer material. So the pad loses, not the rotor. Replace pads on a semi-regular basis. Same thing with this, they're often a softer metal so that if there's any wear, it's gonna happen on the block ring. You can think of it the same way as an engine, right? You have a crankshaft that's steel, very good hard metal, and the bearings, that's what they made out of. Anybody know? Usually softer alloys, they got copper and all kinds of other things in it. Could I use a steel bearing? Well, absolutely. It's gonna have the right space to float on oil. But as they make contact and wear, if I got a steel bearing on a steel crankshaft, it's gonna wear the crankshaft. But if I've got a softer metal on a hard crankshaft, and every once in a while those bearing and that shaft make contact, the bearing loses, and your expensive crankshaft survives. Same concept here. These guys are meant to lose against the speed gear. So if this car does put on 200,000 miles and you wanna rebuild the transmission, no problem, hopefully the blocker is lost. Not your expensive speed here.